Thank you. The May 21st, 2013 meeting of the Recreation and Education Committee will now come to order. Will the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Barker? Here. Mrs. Draw? Here. Mr. Gamble? Here. Mr. Morelli? Here. Chairman, Chairwoman Valerio? Here. Is there anyone signed up for the public forum? Yes, we have three speakers. When I call your name, please come forward to the podium. You will have two minutes and only two minutes in which to address the committee. Please conclude when the buzzer sounds. Our first speaker is Dennis Kindred. Straight through. I never like to be first. Um, I've never done anything like this in my life before, but uh, I learned just this past Sunday that the, uh, the Monroe County Fair is being moved from um, Henrietta to Northampton Park. And uh, basically I wanna go through what, what my knowledge is of the event and, and my uh, lack of information as far as trying to find out what's going on. On Monday, I emailed the Monroe County Fair Association about my concerns and have yet not had a reply. I called the Monroe County Executive Office Building and spoke to someone in Jer Jerry Helfer's office and was told that I would be called by the County Car Parks Commissioner and have not received a call yet. I went on the Monroe County Fair website and it's already said that it is official. It is August 1st through 4th and they have directions to the fair already. It's gonna be a, with a kitty friend, uh, friendly midway um, and on. Today I called the Parks Department to get a copy of the special events application that's required for this and was told it hadn't been filed yet, but the time has been reserved already and uh, the, uh, the area is already reserved for the uh, Monroe County Fair, which is a private organization. I called a friend of mine, his name is Pete McCann, he's a former county legislator and I told him about this and he said, his first comment was, where's the parking? I also uh, uh, confided with another friend who asked not to be named in this uh, forum, but there's already been private conversations about buildings that are gonna be erected in the future and future plans for the site to keep the Monroe County Fair in Northampton Park. The questions that I have for this body tonight, is this how government works? That the people that are impacted by this haven't even consulted. On my way home tonight, can I go on or is that? Here. Here. I didn't know two, two minutes went that uh, fast. Just summarize. Okay, summarize. Um, I'd like this to be a, a public hearing um, because on my way home tonight, I stopped at a couple of neighbors and I just heard about this on Sunday because of the impact that it's gonna have on our neighborhood. Um, if you look at the, uh, the things that I brought up with the Monroe County webs, uh, Monroe County Fair people, um, that they haven't answered yet as far as an impact study or anything like that as far as all of this traffic converging on an area where it's just country roads. Um, I know Bob Colby, you helped pull a, a, a tractor of mine out as far as that goes. I imagine you're probably involved with this, but um, there's more than just uh, uh, a few people that are concerned about uh, the, the, the entire fair. And just to give you some quick numbers, I did a, went on a blog. Since 1972, over six million people have attended the fair. I did some quick math, and if that is, is uh, I don't know, on the average, that's 162,000 people. Over four days, that would be 40,000 people a day at an area that just doesn't have the infrastructure for such Please an summarize. event. Please summarize, thank you. Okay, thank you. Our next speaker is Tracy Renee. Good afternoon. My name is Tracy Renee, and I would like to talk to you about the Monroe County Fair. I am a 4-H leader as well as a Farm Bureau board member, but today I'm speaking to you as a mom. I grew up in the Monroe County 4-H program and have exhibited at the Monroe County Fair for many years. Now my children are Monroe County 4-H members, and they've been active exhibitors for the past 11 years. For the past several, that has not been a rewarding experience for them. 
The mission statement for the Monroe County Fair has talked about supporting youth and agriculture, and both of these aspects have been sadly lacking from the fair as it was. The move to a rural location with thriving agriculture all around it is already a step in the right direction. The intent of the fair board to getting back to supporting the mission statement, focusing on youth and agriculture, is a welcome statement looking towards the future of the fair. The idea of having a youth and agricultural center fair rather than a carnival focused event is also a welcome change. The opportunity to be involved in this endeavor is very exciting, not only to me and my family, but to our 4-H club as well, which is livestock based. We are all looking forward to the Northampton location as a move away from the urban feel that the fair has developed over the years. As an exhibitor's mom who spent the week of the fair living in the barn at Manette Hall last year, the number one question I was asked from the majority of people walking through was where are all of the animals? People came to the fair to see the animals, and when the animal exhibits dropped, in numbers to just a few over the past several years, folks noticed. This is an extremely important aspect involved in revitalizing the fair. By taking it back to its roots of an agricultural and youth-based emphasis, you are giving the people what they want to see. You can find carnival rides anywhere, but only at a county fair can you see a youth who has raised, cared for, and worked with their animals for the past year and having the opportunity to showcase all of their hard work. This is the nature of a county fair, and as a mom, I support the change back to this being the focus of my Monroe County Fair, not just for my kids, but for all kids. Thank you. Thank you. Our last speaker is Cassandra Petos. Thank you. My name is Cassandra Petzos. I'm speaking for Monroe County People for Parks. I attended the Parks Advisory Committee meeting last Thursday and I'm aware of the county administration's plan to give over 25 acres of Northampton Park for use as the site of the Monroe County Fairgrounds since the Monroe County Fair and Recreation Association, Inc. has sold the Domarima. This was the first public body forum that announced this. Although this referral is cleverly constructed to give this move the appearance of a gift to the county, it is in fact a gift of parkland from the county public trust to this private entity. In other words, for their gift of $500,000, they will receive rights to a 25 acre piece of public land for their use. This type of deal and method of arranging it is a dangerous precedent for our parks, a form of alienation of parkland. Although it is not a bad idea for Monroe County Parks to host an agricultural festival as part of its festival's repertoire, this could be done in the usual fashion without turning over 25 acres of land to a private entity and building structures that the taxpayers don't get a chance to review. Regardless as to whether one agrees or comprehends this current deal as a form of alienation of parkland, consider this. How are the county taxpayers expected to believe that $500,000 will, in reality, pay for an enclosed horse rink, two shelters of 1,800 square feet each, one enclosed pavilion of 1,800 square feet, electrical sewer and water upgrades, a paved tractor pull course, and a bunch of open stalls? It's not likely that it will, which is an indication that the county has accepted a bad bid. Yes, the money may go into the Northampton Trust Fund, but much more will come out of the county CIP budget to do this kind of build in the park. I'm almost finished. Here. Summarize, thank you. And it will just be labeled Northampton Park Master Plan Improvements instead of what it is, the Monroe County Fair Building Bond. What is the real cost to county taxpayers for what the Monroe County Fair organizers are getting? without even the formalities of public information meetings in a master planning process with blueprints, environmental assessments, cost estimates, and all the usual opportunities to decide whether a metal-clad horse arena building, for one, is going to be an attractive addition to the park year-round. We sincerely hope the public, which has heard no discussion of this, seen no plausible design plans with cost estimates, nor the full contract document agreement that the county will be signing, will be given more credit and information rather than this backroom deal hustled through this committee and on to the county legislature. Thank you. Thank you. That's all the speakers. 
Is there anyone present who has not signed up to speak who would like to address the committee at this time? All right, there being none, let's move on to the approval of minutes. Uh, the next item is the approval of minutes. They will stand approved unless the clerk is notified of any changes by the end of the day. Um, at this time, uh, we have a couple of presentations. And before I, I do so, I'd like to recognize that we have um, Mr. Simmons from MCC, Director of Finance, and I also recognize Mrs. Utaro from Director of our Public Library. Welcome. Um, at this time, we have Paul Johnson as well, who is our, the Associate Planner of Planning and Development, and he will now give a brief overview of the 2014-19 Capital Improvement Program as it pertains to the Recreation and Education Committee. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, everybody should have a copy of the kind of executive's proposed program. Uh, this comes recommended by the Monroe County Planning Board, which uh, has reviewed the program. Uh, they held one public information meeting uh, to get public comments on, on the program. And uh, as I mentioned, they are recommending uh, this program to you. Um, as is the case with all of our uh, six-year programs, there are no funding approvals associated with your action on this program. It is a plan for our capital investments over the next six years. The first opportunity for funding will come in the form of the capital budget, which is the 2014 uh, year of projects, and that will be formally presented to the legislature as part of the operating budget uh, in November. For this committee, I would like to summarize very quickly uh, a couple of uh, areas in the capital program, starting with the uh, Monroe Community College program, which you'll find on page 11 of the document. Uh, there have been a number of changes uh, to this program if you were comparing it to last year's adopted program. Uh, uh, first of all, you'll see nine, a total of nine new projects uh, that are appearing in the program uh, that have been derived uh, from an update to the uh, College Facilities Master Plan, which was completed in October of 2012. Uh, and th these projects are designed uh, to update and repurpose uh, portions of the 45-year-old Brighton campus uh, to bring it up to modern uh, educational standards and meet the needs of the uh, student population. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, one other uh, change uh, to the program besides the new projects is that the downtown campus project uh, has been, uh, had its final two phases, which were scheduled in last year's program, now combined into one phase in 2014, uh, re uh, which reflects a, a more realistic uh, expectation for expenditure of those funds on that project. Uh, if you look at the program again in comparison to last year's, the total funding for the college uh, six-year program is down 7% from the adopted program. And um, the projects again, uh, are all consistent with this recently updated facilities master plan. Uh, moving on to the library system, which you'll find on page 19. Uh, no uh, huge changes to this program. There's one project, the library system automation uh, program, which has appeared in previous years. Actually, the total funding for this six-year program is down about 6% from last year's effort and includes such things as uh, computer equipment replacement in 2017 and a major uh, upgrade to the software system uh, in the, the library's automation system in 2018. And finally, uh, for this committee, uh, the parks program, which you'll find on page 42, is very consistent with the adopted six-year program. Uh, there are no new projects, uh, just the continuation of master plan improvements in a number of parks as well as uh, continuing investments in buildings and structures and utilities access and site improvements. And the total funding for the six-year parks program is unchanged from the adopted program. And that, Madam Chair, is a, a very brief summary. Uh, we'd be happy to answer questions when you get to this item on your agenda. Thank you. Okay. The next item on the agenda is um, new business. Referral 13-153, 2014. Okay, moved by Mrs. Straw, seconded by Mr. Barker. Are there any questions regarding this? Okay, 
Therefore, um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Referral 13-162. Moved by Mr. Barker, second by Mrs. Draw. Is there any discussion? Okay, there being none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Referral 13-172, accept. Okay, moved by Mrs. Draw, second by Mr. Barker. Okay, I, I would just like to open up for the, the statement and some questions, if you don't mind. Um, and then we'll open it up to our, our members. Um, to the administration, um, will the construction at Northampton Park be considered, as was mentioned, parkland alienation, since the Monroe County Fair and Recreation Association is a private entity. Uh, through you, Madam Chair, um, no, this would not be considered uh, parkland uh, alienation. Um, this is and will remain uh, an integral part of Northampton uh, Park. as. Uh, uh, you know this is about 25 acres uh, of the park, um, which will be um, purposed in a different way than it is now, but it will remain um, county parkland. The uh, Fair and Recreation Association will be able to host the Monroe County Fair on this site for four days. Um, in addition to that, as you see in the referral, uh, they would be able to um, uh, have use of this site for another six days. So that's a total of 10 days out of an entire year. For the rest of the time, um, this will be uh, available for county residents um, to uh, rent themselves uh, for other events um, that could uh, uh, use this uh, type of a setup. Uh, the county would be able to um, rent um, this space um, to them as well uh, for other um, horse shows or rodeos or um, different type of events. But I also anticipate that some of these structures would be also used um, for casual um, family type um, parties and events. Um, you know, this is, this is an improvement um, to a park. Uh, this is something that we do in many of our parks. We, um, put in improvements. The only catch on this is someone else is paying for it, um, which I think is a good thing uh, in this day and age of tight uh, resources at uh, all sorts of municipal levels. Uh, we're receiving a gift of $500,000, um, at least $500,000, um, to put in these improvements and then um, use these um, on uh, behalf of the uh, taxpayers and residents of Monroe County for their use. Um, yes, in exchange um, for this gift, the uh, fair would be able to uh, uh, use this site for 10 days. This is a great deal for the county. This is a great deal for our community. We are able to have the Monroe County Fair uh, partner with Monroe County to put on an agricultural festival that our community can be proud of, that will be focused on agriculture and livestock and poultry and what makes this community great. Um, this agri agriculture is such an important part of Monroe County's heritage and Monroe County's economy and it should be something that's celebrated. And we see this as a win-win for the county, uh, the community, and I guess I'd throw in another win for um, uh, being able to have a fair that we can all be proud of. This isn't gonna be the same fair that you've seen in Henrietta in the past. This is gonna be a fair that doesn't have that carnival look and feel. This is an agricultural fair, which as the speaker said, will feature animals, which will feature horses, which will feature other types of agricultural um, um, items and exhibits. This is, um, you know, this is America at its best. This is something we should all be proud of, and it is not, not alienation of parkland. Thank you. Um, could you please uh, uh, 
give, give me an update on the current structures that are there and you know any remediation of those to meet the needs of this event. Um, through you, Madam Chair, um, as you know, um, being from uh, the west side of town, uh, Northampton Park proudly um, uh, hosts Springdale Farm, a working demonstration farm um, that is owned by the county, operated by Heritage Christian Services, serves as a day programming um, site uh, for their clients, but also, as I said, a demonstration farm for our community where kids come every day and families come every day to learn about agriculture and where their food comes from and, you know, um, what animals um, uh, actually look, feel, and smell like. Um, the smells are there. Um, it's a great place. Uh, we also have um, the ski lodge, which is uh, which would be incorporated in a part of this uh, uh, site. Uh, we have Knollwood Lodge. Uh, we have our labor center. We have um, a couple other um, barns and uh, various infrastructure uh, in Northampton Park. But primarily in the area you're talking about is Springdale Farm and um, the uh, ski lodge. So, in other words, um, some of the overflow or the the uh, Springdale Farm facilities would be incorporated? Well, Springdale Farm is, is there. It, it is, is right uh, adjacent to the site we're talking about. And I would anticipate that Springdale Farm would enjoy a great visitorship during the time, those four days of the um, Monroe County Fair. Because not only would you have um, exhibits um, about f uh, agriculture and exhibits about uh, farm animals and livestock and poultry. You'd have a farm right next door uh, that you can go and uh, visit yourself. And you have um, an automated milking parlor that you can go visit. Um, it's, it, there's a lot of synergy there. It's quite an experience to see that automated, automated milking barn. OK, and one more question that I have is regarding um, accommodations for parking and as well as the traffic flow, since it is uh, it's, and, and on the one side, on Colby Street, it's pretty still rural, um, and sometimes the Route 31 can be congested. I'm just wondering how that's going to be handled. Yeah, through you, Madam Chair, um, the proposal um, that uh, we received from the Fair Association and we um, concur with uh, would direct all uh, visitors to the uh, fair uh, down Colby Street and um, uh, turning northward onto uh, Hubble Road. Hubble Road, we propose, would be um, uh, closed to uh, through traffic uh, on those four days so that it could accommodate uh, parking and also accommodate uh, pedestrians walking from the parking area, which would be on the east side of um, uh, Hubble Road on high ground. Um, there's also parking for um, handicapped parking in the ski lodge parking lot, and there would be uh, exhibitor parking um, near the uh, proposed horse corral. Thank you. Okay, are there any further questions? Legislator Morelli. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. Uh, through you uh, to the administration, um, just looking through this um, this referral, and uh, it talks about how the, 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 the Dome Arena in Henrietta was sold. Just out of curiosity, how much was the, was the Dome Arena sold for through uh, you to the administration. Through you, Madam Chair, I'm not a member of the Fair and Recreation Association. I have no idea. Okay. Uh, thank you. And um, just so it was, we're talking about the the um, gift of five hundred thousand dollars. It's going to go towards uh, new improvements um, to this land. Uh, who will be responsible for the maintenance on those new buildings? And, uh, and all of the new structures through you to the, to the administration? Uh, through you, Madam Chair, very good question. Um, the uh, responsibility for the construction of the uh, buildings and infrastructure uh, would be um, on the um, uh, Fair and Recreation Association's part, uh, meaning that they would fund those. Uh, they would still be um, county projects. They would still be subject to all public works uh, laws and regula regulations and uh, prevailing wage. Um, once they are gifted um, to the county, 
um, they become county uh, property. We add those to our assets and the county would be responsible for uh, maintenance on those structures, much like we are uh, for any um, gift that we receive, such as from the uh, Zoo Society or uh, Springdale Farms or as you just had um, of the new pansy bed that we'll be putting in in uh, 2014. Once uh, it becomes county property, uh, it becomes maintained by the county. That's not to say that we would not have, um, as is uh, anticipated in this um, referral, a long-term relationship with the County Fair Association. So anything other than routine maintenance, um, we would um, uh, be looking to the uh, Fair and Recreation Association um, for uh, assistance on. Thank you, and through you, Madam Chairwoman, to the administration, uh, currently the county budget gives uh, the Fair Association $55,000 per year, is my understanding, from the, the hotel and motel tax, um, which originally was meant for the carrying costs of the Dome Arena. Uh, just so I'm aware, what exactly will that money go toward now? Uh, through you, Madam Chair, um, I don't believe that that budget process has been undertaken for the coming year, and um, those are all subject to new budgets, but uh, I anticipate that um, this uh, year's payment, which uh, was already uh, granted to the Fair and Recreation Association, will go into uh, this infrastructure and improvements, and any um, uh, future payments would also be going toward um, the uh, uh, fair and the um, uh, additions and upkeeps uh, to those uh, structures. Thank you. And, and um, one last question: What is what is the current 25 acres that uh, the county would be um, turning over to the fairgrounds? What exactly is that space currently being used as? Uh, through you, Madam Chair, the county um, is not turning over. Uh, parkland to the fairgrounds. This is still county parkland. Um, we would be constructing um, uh, facilities on uh, this county parkland. But that uh, parkland currently is pretty much uh, scrubland, um, and there are some uh, uh, athletic fields uh, incorporated in that area, which um, would become part of that footprint of the fair, uh, which would return to. Um, athletic fields um, after and be used before um, the, those four days of the fair. Also, the ski lodge uh, is part of that, and that's a you know a lodge that we rent out um, uh, during the year, and it's also the uh, main place where we have um, um, Swain um, uh, ski come in and put on our learn to ski program in the winter, and that would not change either. As a follow-up, will those athletic fields, through through you, Madam Chairman, to the administration, will those athletic fields be receiving any updates as part of this project? Um, through you, Madam Chair, they're in pretty good shape. Um, if there is ever any need for them, um, I, I would assume that any routine maintenance, it's pretty, uh, pretty tough to destroy um, those kind of uh, athletic fields. They're grass, and if you ever tried to have grass not grow somewhere, it's pretty difficult. Great. Thank you. Mr. Gamble. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Um, through the chair, um, it seems like a lot of work has went through to develop this new project that we're talking about. Um, my, one of my questions is, why this site through the chair? Out of all the parks that we have, why was this park chosen? Uh, through you, Madam Chair, great question. Um, why this site? Uh, it's the perfect site. Uh, this is right smack dab in the middle of farming uh, country uh, in Monroe County. This is where uh, agriculture is, uh, it has its home base. Um, this, I, I couldn't think of a better site uh, with a working demonstration farm owned by the county uh, right next door um, in this uh, area that is currently um, very underutilized. Um, it's, as I said, I couldn't think of a better place to put it. It, it fits um, from a programming standpoint, it fits from um, a usage standpoint, and it fits into that 
um, area and neighborhood very well. Um, thank you very much. Um, through the chair, um, when we were developing or considering this proposal for this particular site, um, were there any environmental assessments or any other factors, I mean, environmental assessments performed during this site? Uh, through you, um, Madam Chair, um, as part of uh, this process um, going forward and seeking your approval, uh, we are currently undergoing the seeker process on this uh, site. Uh, we did not want to get ahead of ourselves. We put that RFP out uh, to see if there was interest. Fair Association did express interest through the RFP process. Uh, we didn't really want to do any uh, assessments prior. Um, we're very confident that um, uh, there are, are no impacts out there, but we are going through the full uh, process and that will be completed uh, before the legislature meeting on June 11th. Um, thank you very much. Um, another question is, um, speaking about the RFPs, how many people responded to the RFPs for this particular project? Through you, Madam Chair, um, RFP went out and there was a lot of interest in the RFP, I know. Um, a lot of people downloaded that RFP um, off the uh, county website. Um, however, the uh, Fair and Recreation Association was the uh, uh, sole respondent to the RFP. Thank you very much. Um, excuse me, through the chair, um, the speaker also indicated that at this new site they can have horse shows and rodeos and a variety of other activities there. Um, to your knowledge, um, what was preventing them from having them at the Dome Arena? Um, through you, Madam Chair, um, this site, I, I, I believe the speaker is saying that the county could have um, those kind of um, uh, activities there because as I said, um, other than those 10 days of programming for the fair, this, this is um, uh, an area that the county will be responsible for um, programming in and for um, events and for rentals. So um, those added type of um, events, uh, non-Monroe County Fair, would be the responsibility of the county and the county would be the one um, collecting um, any uh, revenue off of those events. Oh, thank you. Um, through the chair. Has any interest ever been expressed about having events? Um, something similar to that? Um, the horse shows or rodeos or anything in any of our parks or any other place that we, um, we're in charge of? Through you, um, Madam Chair, um, we really don't have the infrastructure or the facilities to host um, those kind of events now, but um, with your approval and you know uh, the construction of this uh, facility, we will. And I'm a firm believer in uh, if you build it, they will come. <laughs> and I'm uh, very confident that we'll be able to attract some very um, quality, family-friendly um, events uh, into this uh, facility. Um, thank you again. Uh, one more question um, through the chair. Um, how was the price determined for this particular piece of, uh, uh, how was the price determined with the Fair Association? Through you. Madam Chair, there, there's no price associated here. Um, what we looked at um, and the, what the Fair Association looked at was a ballpark of what these infrastructure improvements and facility uh, upgrades uh, would cost. And um, we feel and they feel that it's in the neighborhood of $500,000 to construct uh, the type of improvements that we're talking about initially. and. Um, as I said, you know, this is something that we plan on having here for uh, 20 years. So, um, you know, we want to make it so that, you know, they're there for the long haul. Um, thank you. Uh, through the chair, um, um, is it possible to, I can get the names of the person who serves on the board of the Fair Association? Through you, Madam Chair, we could provide that for you. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Um, and one last question through the chair. Um, with all our parks and the natures and the conditions that they're in, 
this one particular project, have we, I mean, you said building and they will come. It's a lot of other projects that they probably can build and they will come too. Why are we gonna, why are we looking at this particular project? I know every year the county has a fair and they've usually been beautiful fairs. Unfortunately, we have to have a, a fair at a different site at this particular time because of what transpired at the Dome Arena. But my question is, again, why this site? Um, the residents seem to be somewhat concerned about this particular project at this time um, because uh, to my knowledge, they haven't had any um, prior notification um, other than what they just recently heard. Uh, through you, Madam Chair, why, you know, I think I addressed why this site, um, why the improvements at this site, because, you know, we are, in, we are entering into a partnership with um, an organization that is willing to put in, um, put the money into uh, this site for these improvements. I don't think that the Fair and Recreation Association, as nice as they are, would be interested in building um, a lodge in Highland Park. Uh, that was not uh, purposed for Fair and Recreation Association um, uh, uh, events that they could uh, host there. You know, that's a chicken and the egg kind of thing. But, you know, as far as, you know, neighbors go, this is um, a very densely populated area. I, you know, I know that any time that you uh, talk about having new programming or new infrastructure uh, in either a park or for that matter, anywhere um, in a community that people who live nearby are naturally um, concerned. Um, and I would say that I think we've been very good neighbors uh, at the uh, Northampton Park, and we will continue to be. Um, and I really don't think that it's a cause for alarm um, that this fair, um, as I said before, is returning to its agricultural roots. And I don't think that it's unfortunate that it's moving from uh, Henrietta. I think it's, it's uh, very fortunate. It's very fortunate for this community. And it's something we should be celebrating, uh, not detracting. This is um, bringing the fair uh, back to um, where it started, with animals, um, with farming displays, with dairy displays, with 4-H, back to basics and you know getting away from uh, the carnies and carnivals and uh, mega rides this is uh, something that's going to be um, uh, very positive very family friendly and uh, very good for our community and the west side of this community in particular um, thank you again for your answer so through the chair so are we saying or am i perceiving that we're not going to have the carnies and the rides and all these other people at this particular site yeah through you, Madam Chair, absolutely. Um, we are not talking about, the fair um, is not talking about having that kind of entertainment here. We're talking about having, you know, horse shows. We're talking about having tractor pull. We're not having um, demolition derby, not having a midway of gigantic carnival rides. They're talking about having, you know, some kiddie rides and bounce houses, much like you saw at the Lilac Festival. Uh, over the weekend. I, I know that they went over there and talked to that vendor who was very responsible and I think everybody thought that that um, kid um, area uh, was a big improvement from previous years at the Lilac Festival. That's uh, what they're talking about putting at the fair this year. It's in no way um, something with the giant uh, Ferris wheels or bobsleds or tilt-a-whirls. Um, this is uh, a family-friendly event. It's much toned down, and as I said, it's uh, back to its agricultural roots. Thank you very much. Is that it? Okay. <laughs> Mr. Morelli. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you bring Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. I do have a, just a couple more questions. Um, first of all, through you, Madam Chairwoman, to the administration, um, what type of outreach was done to the neighborhood and the residents of the area when selecting the site uh, through you madam chair there was none okay and um, and uh, just for uh, for uh, reference why is it that um, through you madam chairman to the administration uh, why is it that the that the fair that the, the activities that are going to be done uh, during the fair 
can't be done with um, non-permanent structures such as tents and 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 that type um, uh, so th as if to not you know change the entire landscape of the 25 acres uh, through you madam chair that's a great question and, and they will be done with temporary uh, structures this year um, by and large uh, what we're talking about constructing uh, in time for a festival uh, this year would be the horse corral and I'd like to uh, correct uh, one of the uh, speakers at public forum this is not an aluminum clad horse arena um, this is a horse corral with horse fencing that's 400 by 130 it's not an indoor um, facility this is a uh, um, corral type of an arena perhaps arena um, is a bit of a misnomer but that's what it's called um, it's a, a fenced in area uh, we're talking about doing that we're talking about doing the uh, uh, tractor and horse pull area and then putting in um, some of the uh, uh, electrical and, and water infrastructure um, but um, a lot of the other stuff will be temporary this year um, you know I, I really don't think it's conducive to have uh, temporary structures there all the time because um, we do have need for um, more permanent structures that um, people um, are looking for in this um, uh, park as chairman chairwoman Valerio um, asked and she heard there's two rentable lodges in this park and those lodges are rented out um, on a consistent basis and you know if we have three and that's all we're talking about three 30 by 60 um, lodge type uh, buildings uh, added um, to this park um, in um, um, some spaced out areas of this uh, area of the park uh, being permanent structures that that's good because the county will be able to rent those uh, out to families um, and we will be able to not only provide a nice venue for them we'll be able to collect revenue and uh, have a nice revenue source for not only um, our county parks budget but also for Northampton Park and through you madam chairman to the administration is it possible to get um, a full um, showing of what the projects would be the, the specifics of each of the projects what the plans look like and and you know what what all of the money is going toward and how it's going to be used and through you madam chair I'd be happy to provide that to the legislator um, between now and um, the full legislature meeting absolutely thank you very much thank you Mrs. Straw chairwoman I just wanted to mention that I know I'm a legislator from the east side but I do remember seeing for uh, a while back when the when the dome was being sold that they were there was I believe a story in the Democrat and Chronicle and also in I don't know what I can't remember what channel to the television station did do a story about looking into the Northampton uh, site so uh, as to be closer to agriculture so I do remember there has been some outreach you know done on that so I did want to mention that as well thank you Madam Chair, I am going to encourage the rest of the committee to vote in favor of this. Um, I think this is a great idea. I like the idea of bringing the fair back to its roots. As a longtime teacher, 25 years in the classroom, I've seen the benefits of the 4-H programs over and over again. And the fact is that the fair that we had was going away from all of that. And this will bring us back to what it was originally meant. Agriculture is one of the cornerstones of Monroe County. That's why it's on our seal. And uh, I, I love the idea that uh, we'll be going back to that. And I think this park fits that perfectly. And the fact that uh, this will be beneficial for children, um, I'm all in favor. And I encourage my colleagues to vote in favor of this. Well, I guess I, I would have to say I concur. Con concur. Um, and I would like to thank the members of this committee, as well as um, Director of Parks, Mr. Staub, for your thoughtful questions and answers this evening. Um, I attended the Parks Advisory Committee, albeit a little late, and I know that there were concerns um, from the community regarding, um, you know, use of park land. However, I'm satisfied with the answers that were provided to my questions, and, and I think this is a good collaboration of the uh, Monroe County Fair Association and the Parks Department, and as Mr. Barker indicated that um, anything that promotes um, agriculture, which are fundamentally was the root of this community, 
and getting youth involved. And you know, we, we really need to permeate. Um, agriculture is part of, of our um, you know, collective source of nutrition. And, and you know, it's, it's what we're all about, Grow Monroe, et cetera. So I, I would say that I encourage you to vote as well. And I'm going to vote in favor of this tonight. So therefore, at this time, can we call for a vote? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Okay, so let's do a roll call vote just to okay. get the answer. Mr. Barker? Yes. Mrs. Draw? Yes. Mr. Gamble? Yes. Mr. Morelli? Yes. Chairwoman Valerio? Yes. Four to one passes. Okay. Thank you. So, um, is there any other discussion? Um, not discussion. Is there any other unfinished business to come before this committee? All right, there being none, um, the May 21st, 2013 meeting of the Recreation Committee stands adjourned. The next meeting of the Recreation and Education Committee is scheduled for June 25th, 2013. Thank you.